Now that all the main elements of TV8 are playable in Genshin Impact, it's time to start looking at how else the meta could change with an additional element. It's already speculated that Dainslave, once made playable, will have a new element for players to explore, but that's only new for now. Considering his addition will not be happening until way later, a neutral element would be a good way to ease people into having Genshin Impact characters with abyssal powers instead of vision, or for characters with no visions. But before starting off this video, I want you guys to like us subscribe this channel if you haven't. Now let's start. Though there have technically been instances where a character gains their vision in front of the traveler, they can't be considered a neutral element or visionless since they got one in the end. But if the game took a chance and gave a neutral element in the game, there could be a lot of fun things to come out of this. And through it could be argued that Geo or Animo are neutral elements, they still have reactions which are shrill and crystallized. So a true neutral element could still be beneficial. Well you might be wondering how a neutral element could work in Genshin Impact? Well, to answer this question, we have to jump into a neutral character's gameplay and mechanic. It isn't a secret that the meta for Genshin Impact circles around teams that either have a powerful niche or create elemental reactions. A character with a truly neutral element wouldn't be able to interact with the other elements in Devat, but that doesn't have to stop them from being a strong unit. One thing Genshin Impact has been having fun with lately is niche units, and even more niche weapons for them. In place of having no reactions for them to work with themselves, this hypothetical neutral element character could greatly buff all other reactions and be one of the best supports in the game for that reason. Their signature weapon could help buff their team based on the elements of the characters in the party, since this is something that has been done before with units such as Genshin Impact's Farozan and others like Goro, buff based on Geo units, Yunjin, buff based on varied units, and Navia, buff based on varied units again. If the neutral element character was made to be a DPS, the other party members being a different element would still be a good mechanic to utilize. As the game has seen other neutral elements like Animo and a DPS in the form of Zhao or Wanderer, they may be able to absorb the other party members elements into the attacks or have buffs provided based on the teams of specific elements. Something like that could be fun for experimental players to work with as they get used to the character and their quirks. Now how the neutral element could be introduced in Genshin Impact? Well, Considering how long it took for Genshin Impact to give players a dead row unit despite the elements have been introduced in the game through enemies, it might be smart to take the same path with neutral element introduction. Introducing enemies without any elemental powers, weaknesses or buffs, therefore being considered neutral, could be a good way to test the player's reaction to a neutral element. The element has a lot to offer and could change how the meta in Genshin Impact works for a while, especially in Spiral Abyss since it tends to add buffs unique to a new character. Another way the element could be introduced is through puzzles. One big part of Genshin Impact exploration is that each time there is a new area added, there are new puzzles and chests to unlock for rewards. By introducing this hypothetical element through puzzles, if players have a negative reaction to it, Genshin Impact would be able to play around with how the element works, reintroducing it to the community and seeing if players change their minds. And there are many more advantages like versatility. A neutral element could offer a versatile playstyle that is not inherently strong or weak against any particular element. This would allow players more flexibility in team building and strategic choices. We will also get adaptability. A neutral element could adapt to different scenarios without being hindered by elemental interactions. This could be particularly useful in areas where specific elemental reactions may be challenging or less effective. But the most important thing is balance. The addition of this element could help balance the overall elemental distribution in the game, ensuring that players have more options and aren't limited by traditional strength and weaknesses of the existing elements. But this is just my opinion. What do you guys think? Should Hoyoverse add a neutral element to the game or not? Comment down your answers below and I will see you in the next video.